everybody and welcome to Cop for the Dutoni here. Let's talk about Liverpool. Let's talk about this title challenge. Is it real? Could it be possible? I've said from day one that I believe that Manchester City will win this Premier League season, but the Reds are turning my head just a tad and making me believe. Why not? This Liverpool side has everything. It has a spine better than most teams. And I'm wearing this today in honour of a part of that spine who has shown up big over the Christmas period, and that is Bobby Firmino. Bobby Firmino! Bobby Firmino! So, got a little bit of old school Adidas, a little bit of Brazilian Samba to smash into cough for that today. So we play Brighton. We play Brighton this weekend. And let's be honest, every game now until the end of the season is a must win. We must win and keep winning if we want to keep the dream alive, and that is winning the English Premier League. And why can't we? When you've got the likes of Alisson, another Brazilian, you've got the likes of Fabinho, defensive centre mid, rocking in a centre half, Brazilian, and you've got Henderson on his day, one of the best players in that position, Wijnaldum on fire this season, Bobby Firmino, taking names recently, and Salah, Mane. Let's be honest, the team's class. You've got two of the best fullbacks in the world currently, Trent Alexander Arno and Robbo of the Andy variety. Who wouldn't want both of those in their team? And we're, you know, we're blessed with all these quality players. So he goes with a midfield that I would like to have seen play at City but didn't. And it adds Shakiri with Ronaldo and Henderson. The front three the same. Defensively, what's changed? We throw in the Brazilian in centre half. I was excited to see that. You know, I would be excited to see my mum or dad play centre half next to Virgil van Dijk, if I'm honest, with Robbo and Trent. Um, looked like Trent had an issue in the warm up. He stood on the ball finally, and we didn't know if he was going to make the game. Um, Milner warms up constantly through the warm up slash when the players are coming out on the field to the time I would say 25 30 minutes into the game Milner's constantly warming up thinking he's coming on my question is I don't understand why the subs don't warm up as well as the team that's probably something for the sports science people to tell me about but I would expect everybody to warm up because you never know when you're going to come on the pitch you don't know when someone's going to pull a hamstring Dev Zilovren in the first three minutes of a game and have to go off so that was very interesting um, what a professional job I use the word professional, um, poised. That's the thing I admire about this group that Klopp has put together the most, that they just take their time. I don't think they were playing at 100%. Um, but they were just calm and relaxed throughout the entire game. I was calm and relaxed throughout the entire game. There was lots of reds out there. Heads were falling off. And they were falling off purely because, you know, you'd expect a team this, this good to put five past every single team you play. I mean, I was spoiled rotten when I went back to England to watch the Reds play. Newcastle, four goals. Arsenal, five goals. Nine goals. Like, it's insane. Um, in three matches, we scored ten. Like, you're looking at breaking records with this team constantly. But there's going to be games that we play where the team dig in, defend well. Brighton are very well organised. They have a great manager. They know how to defend. And it takes a moment of complete brilliance from the Egyptian king and I said to my friends before the start of the game Mo needs to have a moment in this match he needs to do something, he needs to be that spark, that catalyst that gets us through this game um, and, and we did that You know, first half it was a lot of possession from Liverpool, a lot of ball manipulation, a lot of ball movement but patience, they stayed in shape, they dominated the ball we stopped Brighton having any type of attempt on our goal but we didn't really have a create a chance where we looked like we were going to score second half Obviously, with our patience and our build-up, Brighton tire, but Liverpool continue to play the same way as they play throughout the first half. Um, constantly trying to get in behind, trying to unlock the Brighton defence. And we got our moments. You know, The ball falls to Salah inside the penalty area. He twists, he turns, he keeps the ball, like all good strikers do inside the penalty area. And there's contact, it's clear penalty, and it's a penalty. The referee got a lot of heat throughout the game from the Brighton fans and a lot of people on social media. Um, 
every foul was a foul. The penalty was a penalty. It was one of the best refereeing performances I've seen. I think if I look back every incident and referees around the world would tell me better, um, they were all spot on. He got every major decision right. He refereed a fantastic game. It's not many times you'll hear me say that. I really struggle with referees. I am a referee also. But being a coach, you know what a good ref is and you know what a bad ref is. You know when a referee is refing a good game and you know when a referee is having a very poor game. Um, and this referee had a fantastic game. He really did. Um, let's talk about Bobby. So, okay, I'll go. I know, ADHD flying through my head. And I do have that, so it is, an, it is one of my issues. I tend to fly all over the place. But we take the penalty, Salah blasts it, and we score. So Liverpool won Brighton nil. Cough for that Brighton. So anyway, getting on to this man. I really made a point of watching him throughout the first game. I mean, let's talk about the goal he scores against Arsenal, the second goal. Oh, my God. The dribbling, the, the ability to be strong, the ability to be calm under pressure. I mean, Bobby with his shiny white teeth and his awesome hair, um, kind of has it all on his day. And I, I said this last season, and I haven't really seen it this season, that there's no striker like him in the world. There's no striker that does what he does, plays the way he plays. And when he's on, he's amazing. Now, what Liverpool have, have found a way of doing is when Bobby is not on, still winning games. And we struggled to do that last season. If Bobby was not on it, Liverpool basically didn't win. This year, we, something's changed. So the fact that now Liverpool are controlling games better, playing a little better than they were, and Bobby has now come to the party, bodes brilliantly. We kept saying that this front three is not playing well, and when it clicks, it's going to be brilliant. Well, you know what? We saw that against Arsenal. Arsenal, it clicked. They were on fire. Newcastle, everything we did basically worked. Um, it was another tough game. Newcastle reminded me of the Brighton game, because in the first half, it was very close. It was very tight. You know, we get the goal off a corner kick, bit of bit of magic from Degs, he smashed it in the cop end. Second half, we start strong, we get a penalty early. Um, we seem to have a good way on the clock, especially this season, of scoring right before the half or right after half time. It just takes the pressure off. It's like a big sigh of relief. I know people that were in the stadium away at Brighton, and you know, a couple of lads told me that it was like celebrating the Champions League equaliser. Like it was that big of a moment. And I, might, I know it might sound like a nonsense, but that's what it felt like. Like When that ball goes in the back of the net, it was a big moment. I didn't cheer it like I cheered Everton. I didn't cheer it like I cheered for Istanbul. You know, for Gerrard's screamer against West Ham in the cup final. I didn't have that type of explosion. Because the whole time I'm watching this game, I'm just chilled. I'm calm. I'm relaxed. I knew it was going to come. I really did have the confidence that we were going to win this game. Not handsomely, not huge, but we were going to do enough to get through this match and win the match. And that's what we did. Both our fullbacks again played well. Robinson in particular. Um, Fabinho playing centre half was excellent. Allison in goal. Doesn't have not a lot to do, but like I said, what I like about Allison, Allison is, is the way the way he thinks, the way he moves, the way he wants the ball when the defence has it. His distribution is second to none. Midfield, Henderson was excellent again. A lot of people on Henderson's back constantly. I I I, I know when Henderson's having a bad game and and a lot of it comes down to injury because Henderson has to go all the time. And Henderson keeps the ball moving, and I like that. He's not going to be playing diagonal 60-yard passes or shooting the ball outside the 18 like Gerrard. He's not Gerrard, and so many Liverpool fans don't get that, that Henderson is not Gerrard and can't move past it. So no matter what Hendo does, he's put in that category of, well, he's not Steven Gerrard. Well, he's not Steven Gerrard. He doesn't play like Steven Gerrard. For me, Henderson is a massive upgrade on Lucas. And people didn't like Lucas. You know, It was only towards the end of this... Lucas's time at Liverpool, that people actually started saying, oh my God, we need a Lucas in this team. Because Lucas always did a job in the defensive centre midfield role, and he did it better than anybody else. And again, I'm a huge Lucas fan. I'm a huge Henderson fan. So when Henderson's fit, and he hasn't got injuries, he, there's no one better than him in this, in this league, in this team. You add Ronaldo into this. Ronaldo had a quiet game. Shaqiri had a very quiet game. I didn't really notice him at all other than when I saw Klopp screaming at him to get back and defend. He likes to keep Shaqiri on a very, very short leash. And I think Shaqiri is a better impact sub. I don't think I don't think I like him in a starting role. Ideally, I would like to see Fabinho as the CDM and Henderson and Ronaldo alongside him. That's my ideal midfield. As much as I love James Milner, I think those three players collectively are better. The front three played well. Mane needs to be more aggressive. Mane needs to be more selfish. I think last season it was 
it was a catch-22 with Manny. I think last year he was a little bit more selfish and he wasn't passing when he should have been passing. But he scores a lot of goals. He scores a lot of big goals. And I feel like throughout the Brighton game, we could have won this game comfortably in the second half by three. But Mane either held on the ball too long and then passed it when he should have probably shot it. Or he takes too many touches when in one touch out of his feet, he can smash it in the goal. Think back to the goal he scored past City last year where he puts it in the top corner at Anfield, Anfield Road End. Just takes a touch out of his feet, pings it left-footed in the top corner. I'd like to see Mane be a little bit more selfish. And I feel like at the moment, he's constantly second-guessing what he should be doing in relation to playing a pass to Bobby and playing a pass to Mo. It seems to be more balls into Mo because Bobby... Who knows where Bobby is on the on the field? He he, he plays... Reminds me of Wayne Rooney at Man United when Man United was shite. I mean, the way they are now when he was shite. And... Um, Rooney would show up at left back, at right back, at centred off, and then he would run back up, up top and he would play everywhere in between. Bobby seems to do that for Liverpool. I, I, I would love to see Bobby's heat map from this game because he was all over the pitch and he ran his socks off and I was so impressed with his performance. You know, he doesn't create a chance, he doesn't get a goal, but he works his socks off for the team, constantly wants the ball. And I said this when we first signed Bobby, I never want Bobby for me to pass a ball because he gives it away constantly. And he did that quite a bit against Arsenal, even though he had a blinder, goal scoring wise, in a great you know five to one victory. But he has moments when he makes poor decisions, and he seems to be off the short pass. Like he look, he's looking for the give and go constantly, Bobby. Um, and he didn't do that again against Brighton. I think because Brighton sat so deep, he just found so much more room, and he just kept the ball moving. And he had some nice turns and nice touches, um, and it was good. It was a good match. It's not something I'm going to sit back and watch it again, because I'm not going to do that. Um, I, I lived in that moment. I took enough from that game to realise how we played, the job that Klopp had done there. And it was a massive three points, and we collected all three points. So I'm excited for the rest of the season. The next four games, again, are huge. Everyone needs to be treated like a cup final. West Ham, potentially, is probably the banana skin, because you never know what you're going to get with West Ham. Hopefully, Anatovic throws all his toys out the pram and gets off. Because I'll tell you what, or maybe he stays. I don't know. I'll watch West Ham play anyway this weekend. And West Ham were poor. Philippe Anderson is brilliant. I think he's a. I would love to see Philippe Anderson in a Liverpool shirt. He's a fabulous player. But now to basically pouted. Did a clap around the stadium as he was subbed off. He shouldn't have been on the pitch as long as he was against Arsenal. But um, big shout out to Arsenal fan TV, by the way. Gotta say, I'm obsessed. Love it. Love watching it. You guys do awesome jobs. Um, Love, love watching it when you win. Love watching it when you when you lose. Especially when, when Liverpool smash you at Anfield. But that's another story. We've mentioned that too much in this video anyway. So Liverpool won. Brighton nil. Like I said, next four games are key. If we can get if we can get maximum points, Man City play later today. Wofford are in a good reign of form right now. Could Wofford take points off City? That'd be great. Other good thing from this weekend was Manchester United were crap. Let's be honest. They were terrible. They were absolutely terrible. I know there's going to be a lot of Man United fans celebrating. and Oh my God, Solskjaer's the greatest thing ever. Not really. Just the players are now playing for him. Um, Pog was actually showing up in a Man United shirt and actually looks good. And he had a good game against Spurs in the first half yesterday. Second half, he was crap. Let's be honest. He was crap. Um, the whole Man United team were crap. I mean, you got the likes of Herrera looking really good against the Tottenham team. It says what he thought of Mourinho when he played for Mourinho. It really does. And a lot of those players did not play for Jose Mourinho. So, they were abysmal yesterday. They could have lost They could have lost that game 6-1. Easily, Spurs could have beat them 6-1 yesterday. But they end up winning 1-0. And it was down to the goalkeeper and Tottenham's poor finishing. Because everything Tottenham hit on goal was either towards De Gea or at his feet. And he makes those saves. And his positioning is good, I get it. But he hasn't made, he hasn't made a good save. He does a camera dive for one that Deli Alley tries to bend, but it's an it's an easy save. I'd expect a, a goalkeeper of his class to make. Do I think De Gea is world class? I do. Do I think he's better than Allison? I don't. I don't. I think we have a better goalkeeper, and I would take Allison over De Gea every single time. Um, but I would expect him to make all the saves that he made yesterday. It was just poor finishing from Tottenham. Imagine if they hit any of those balls high. They might have scored a couple of goals. Everything was low at his feet. They hit it at him. So that, let's just let's just wrap up talking about United <laughs> and move back on to the Mighty Reds. So United were crap. Spurs lose. Win-win. It was made up. Made up to see how poor they are, but they beat Tottenham, which 
makes the gap from Liverpool even bigger. You know, hopefully it will become a two-horse race and one a two-horse race that Liverpool can win. Fingers crossed. Like I said, I'm starting to believe in this red machine. I'm believing Klopp, believe in this team, believe in the subs. It, it's looking good. Would I like to add another player in January? I definitely would. You know, we talk about Fakir coming in constantly and that move broke down, but some someone of that ilk coming in. You know, City have got Jesus Navas on the bench, a quality striker. So when Aguero doesn't play or he's injured, he comes in and City don't really miss a beat. You know, he's a very, very good striker. He's a top three in the Premier League centre forward who is on the City bench, you know, and plays in like League Cups and scores lots of goals. I mean, he scored four goals last week. So we need something like that coming off the bench. Isn't it funny when Daniel Sturridge's contract has run out, he hasn't been injured this entire season? Hmm, as much as I love Sturridge, something to think about. You know, he's playing, he's on the bench, he's available, he's there every single week. So, let's see how the storage situation pans out. But, we need to get our injured players back. We need a little bit more strength and depth. If they want to win this league, I would love to see us make a statement and pick up somebody in this January window. Um, that's it. Dottoni, cough for that. Brazil, Bobby Firmino. Fabinho, obviously, I'm going to say Bobby was my man of the match. But wasn't Fabinho amazing a centre half? Alisson's a beast in goal. The Brazilian lads are boss, let's be honest. Last shout out, Nabi Keita, do better mate. If you're going to come off on the bench in the last three minutes, don't give all the Reds half attacks by getting the ball, trying to dribble, losing the ball, looking for a foul, and then Brighton nearly score. It wasn't for a bit of great defending in regards to our centre halves, and especially Trent Alexander-Arnold, that basically saved the day. Fabinho, legend, you got us three points, you made that block, it was probably going in. Congratulations. First game of centre half for the Mighty Reds, you look boss, next to the Grok monster, Virgil van Dijk. Say it again, if you like the video, put a like on the video. This has been Dottoni, cop for that, like it on Facebook, like it on YouTube, and that's it. Alright, enjoy the rest of your day Reds, you'll never walk alone. ta -da for now, ta -da. ta -da. And you'll never walk alone.